Um, so I felt like I needed to do something, you know, when I was in this car crash and I saw the car hitting this, the semi, I was negotiating with that. I'm like, I promise I'll do something significant if you'll let me live, right? Like you have one of those, like come to Jesus moments and you're like Mm -hmm, negotiating mm -hmm. with the devil. And so then when I survived, I'm like, man, what am I going to do that's significant? That's a heavy lift, right? Like, I don't even know what that looks like. And so when this coach brought up this goal, he's like, listen, it's the second highest peak on each of the seven continents. It's only been done by a male. So you'd be the first woman to do it. And if you think about it, there's Mm -hmm. seven continents, there's seven mountains, and you have seven children. Kind of sounds like a jackpot. And it did. Like I had that whole body. Yes. That didn't mean like I'd had no reason to have a whole body. Yes, but I did. And the crazy thing about that was it was so significant to me because I wanted women around the world to see that motherhood is an and title, not a if then, Mm -hmm. right? Like if I'm a mom, I can't do all these other things. And I really realized like when I stepped into things that got me excited, It actually gave my kids permission to get excited about things and to push harder and to try bigger and to do whatever. And so by me allowing myself to have these experiences, it allowed my kids to have the same experiences and I became a better mother and we all kind of rised with the water. It was pretty amazing. Hello, my extraordinary women friends. I am so excited to introduce our keynote speaker for the 10th annual Extraordinary Women Ignite Conference taking place October 24th through 26th, Jen Drummond. Jen is a trailblazing mountaineer and entrepreneur recognized as the first woman to complete the seven second summits. Her remarkable journey embodies resilience and determination, inspiring others to pursue their dreams fearlessly. As the keynote speaker for the Extraordinary Women Ignite Conference, Jen will share her empowering message, We Can Do Hard, emphasizing the strength and potential within every woman. Her story is a testament to pushing boundaries and redefining what's possible. In our conversation today, Jen shared her awe-inspiring story of conquering the second highest summits on all seven continents, the challenges she faced, and the moments she felt like giving up. She shares how she built a robust support system and the mental strategies she employed to stay focused and motivated. Jen also discussed how her mountaineering experiences have influenced her current work and the lessons she has learned about tackling difficult challenges, lessons she will share at Ignite in her talk, We Can Do Hard. Don't miss the chance to hear Jen's inspiring words and join us for an unforgettable experience at Ignite. Get your tickets today at camigelner.com forward slash ignite. Well, welcome to Extraordinary Women Radio, Jen. It is so exciting to have you here. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's going to be a lot of fun to have you at Ignite coming up here in October 24th through 26th as our keynote speaker. Um, And I'm just stoked to have you share your story today. I'm stoked to have you share your story and your wisdom at Ignite. And it's going to fit right in there. I mean, it's just so so going to fit right in there. Oh, I'm so excited about all of it. So thank you for the opportunity. And for everybody that comes, you will not be disappointed that I promise. Oh, yeah, it's going to the lineup of speakers is really amazing this year. And this is our 10th annual Extraordinary hey. Women Ignite. So it's, um, that's exciting that, you know, we're, we're at that space where it's, you know, we've done this for 10 years and what comes out of it is, you know, for women entrepreneurs really is that they step into the new year with just a, a, you know, a, a bigger step, um, bigger visions. Um, you know, it's just really, I've seen it for all these years and I know that this year is going to be really, you know, spot on. So let's dive into your story. Um, so you've climbed the second highest summit of all seven continents across yes. around the world. Wow. Around the what world. a feat, first yes. of all. Yes, totally. Yeah. I mean, I, that's, and some I first. just can't even imagine. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. especially for me, I never had slept in a tent before. When I said, let's take this thing on. <laughs> so, you know, when I told people what I was going to do, they're like, you, are you sure? Like you like, you know, hotels and stuff. And yeah. So 
there we go. I got introduced to tent life real fast. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so amazing. And when I think about, you know, having not ever done any mountaineer, mountaineering at all and jumping into this. So what was it that prompted this whole idea? Yeah. You know, I think for all of us, we have these line in the sand moments in our lives and it's like, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. something's changing. Like this isn't working anymore. Um, some of us are proactive and put those purposely into our lives. Some of us like me have a car accident that we survived. That's like, whoa, mm -hmm. wait a minute. This game could end. And if it ended today, there's a lot I left on the table. There's stuff I need to do, experience and try. And, you know, you just look at it different. And um, so I started making a bucket list. And instead, like, I think my bucket list before was more sure things. And my bucket list mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. was more, I don't care if I'm good or bad at it. I just want to know what it's like to play the piano or to, you know, taste pasta in Italy or all those different things. And on that list was climb a mountain. I live in Park City, so I'm surrounded by mountains. And, you know, I think some of our goals just get escalated. I was training for one. My son wanted to egg me on and like thought I should climb Everest. And I thought, why not? And so I leaned into Everest because it thought felt significant. I don't know. Do you ever feel that way? Like if you do Certainly. something significant, then oh, it's yeah, like totally. if I fail, no big deal, right? Yeah. 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 So I was kind of like, well, if I do something as big as Everest and I don't succeed, no one's going to expect me to succeed. So that's okay. Or sometimes when we take smaller goals, <laughs> but it's a little more tried. fearful. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, right. And then my coach that I hired, because anytime we step into something new, we have to bring in people to our lives to make that new thing easier. And so I call right. a coach, right. this coach helps me. A mountaineering and he gets, coach? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was specific uh -huh. to mountaineering and he had climbed all, a ton of mountains and knew all the players in the industry and, you know, all that kind of experience that he had that he brought to the table. And he's the one who suggested the seven second summits. And I have to be honest, like when he first brought it up, I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Like, what do you mean? What are the seven second summits? So <laughs> I was clueless. <laughs> but yeah. 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 And so what had you say yes to that? Um, so I felt like I needed to do something, you know, when I was in this car crash and I saw the car hitting this, the semi, I was negotiating with death. I'm like, I promise I'll do something significant if you'll let me live. Right. Like you have one of those, like come to Jesus <laughs> moments and you're like mm -hmm, negotiating mm -hmm. with the devil. And so then when I survived, I'm like, man, what am I going to do that's significant? That's a heavy lift, right? Like, I don't even know what that looks yeah, like. Yeah. And so yeah. when this coach brought up this goal, he's like, listen, it's the second highest peak on each of the seven continents. It's only been done by a male. So you'd be the first mm -hmm. woman to do it. And if you think about it, there's mm -hmm. seven continents, there's seven mountains, and you have seven children. Kind of sounds like a jackpot. And it did. Like I had that whole body. Yes. That didn't mean like I had no reason to have a whole body. Yes, but I did. And the crazy thing about that mm -hmm. was it was so significant to me because I wanted women around the world to see that motherhood is an and title, not a if then, mm -hmm. right? Like if I'm a mom, I can't do all these other things. Yeah. And I really yeah. realized like when I stepped into things that got me excited, it actually gave my kids permission yeah. to get excited about things and to push harder and to try bigger and to do whatever. And so by me allowing myself to have these experiences, it allowed my kids to have the same experiences and I became a better mother and we all kind of rised right. with the water. It was pretty amazing. Yeah. So the seven second highest summits, I mean, that, that, that that's, they're, they're big deals. They're totally big yeah. deals. Name, yeah. name, tell us the, the names of the summits. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the continents that they're in. Yeah. Um, so the easiest one is in Australia. It's called um, Mount Townsend. Mm -hmm. I saved that for the end okay. and <laughs> it was not easy. I mean, it would have been easy, but uh -huh. you know, like weather plays a huge role and it was a unique, oh, totally, messy totally. experience. Yes. I'm like, oh my God, this, no mm -hmm. one, they didn't give mm -hmm. me any of these mountains for free. Let's put it this way. Um, right. I had Mount right. Kenya and Africa. 
So the interesting thing about right. Kenya is that it is a rock climb. So it's not a hike. Like a lot of mountaineering pursuits are mainly hikes with a little bit of climbing. This was a full 20 pitch rock climb and I had a rock climb before. So I had to learn all of that. Dick Tau in Russia is for Europe. K2 okay. Okay. for Asia, right? K2 is a monster. Wow. Um, Mount Tyree really for that. Antarctica. And then Ojo del Salado for South America. And then our hometown one or our home base one for North America is called Mount Logan. It was my hardest one. I'm like, this should be my home court advantage. Why is this one so hard? But it was a struggle. However, Where's those that one? Are the I don't mountains. even know where that one is. Where's Mount Logan? Yeah, it's located in yeah, it's located in Canada. And it's uh -huh. actually easier to get to from Alaska, but Canada doesn't okay. allow you to enter from Alaska. They make you enter okay. from Canada. So you fly into this little teeny tiny town and then you take this little plane and it drops you off on the glacier and it drive it flies away. And you're like, oh, there's no people. Okay, I hope we're good. It's pretty, it's pretty remote for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So wow. I mean, what that is just so impressive. Um as you were there times that you felt like, gosh, I want to just quit. Oh my gosh. Were there times I wanted to quit All the time. Like every day, <laughs> multiple times. And especially when something mm -hmm. ridiculous didn't go my way. And then the, the, mm -hmm. uh, the crazy part about my whole pursuit was I paid to be there. Right. So you're sitting there right. thinking, yeah, it's I mean, it's not to cheap. See those kind of mountains. It's right. Like, right. super expensive. So you're sitting there thinking like I could have been in the Caribbean for a week. Instead, I'm like <laughs> peeing in a hole, sleeping in a tent, rehydrating food and like freezing. Like what is wrong with me? Right. right? Like there, that, that goes on <laughs> all the time. And the only thing that kept me going was if I stand on top of this mountain, I don't fit the mold. And so anybody who sees my picture on top of that mountain it sparks a thought of curiosity. Like she's the climber. Mm -hmm. She did that. Like what? And once you spark curiosity in people, it spills into other things. And now more becomes possible in all arenas. Mm -hmm. So that's what really that. kept me going in it. those hard moments. Yeah. Yeah. That you could really impact others' decisions to, to, to do big things, to, you know, stretch into, you know, into places that they would have never imagined themselves in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because I was stretching yeah, myself so into cool. places so I never saw myself in. And so if I'm doing it right. and all of a sudden you're right. watching and now you're doing it and I think everything gets better. Right. Yeah. So ha talk about building the support system around you because you, yes. you know, you clearly had to build a, a really solid support system. What, what did that look like? Oh, it was hard at first because you have to ask for help, right? And help it feels mm -hmm. like a four letter word to women. Like I'm happy to give it. You can call me for anything. I am your girl. I will be there. But for me to ask for help, I'm like, oh, I'm suffocating, right? It's the hardest thing ever. But when you take on these big goals, like big mountains take big teams. Like you have to learn how to ask mm -hmm. for help. And mm -hmm. lucky for me, one of my fur earlier climbs was Mount Everest. And I'm like crazy. I'm a mom, right? So everybody here listening can totally relate. But I wasn't even worried about climbing Mount Everest. I was worried about my children. And would they be okay because I was going to be away from home for a few weeks? And how would they bear? And what would this mean like 30 years from now? And, you know, all the stories. That was the story that was trying mm -hmm. to keep me stuck, right? It wasn't a story. Mm -hmm. I could have allowed it to keep me stuck. But I realized, well, that's just right. one truth. So there has to be other truth. So anyways, mm -hmm. I'm taking care of the kids. I line up help. I line up activities. They have everything dialed in. And so I go to the kids' school and I go to talk to the teachers and I tell them like, hey, I'm going to go climb Everest. Everything's taken care of. But I'm guessing that since I'm gone for a couple of weeks, the kids are going to get off a little bit. And all I want you to do is just maybe offer them a little bit of grace. And so this teacher, mm -hmm. one of them in particular, is like, Hey, this is amazing. Would you mind coming in and talking to the kids about setting Everest like goals at the school? And we can get the whole school behind this. And I'm like, okay. I mean, I still get goosebumps talking about this. So I'm like, okay. So I go into the classrooms, we color little hikers, and on each hiker, they're waving a flag. And that flag is like what this kid's Everest goal is. 
And some of it's skiing a black diamond ski run or making a travel soccer team or, you know, whatever it is, they have it listed. And then in the front of the school, we made this huge mountain and we made a little hiker, which was me. And we had a, I had a tracking device on me. So then the kids could mm -hmm. move me up and down the mountain while I was climbing. And every day oh, wow. the kids went into school, they would know where I was. Well, Everest nowadays has technology. So you can actually Zoom call from base camp. So I got to oh, base wow. camp and I Zoom called into the classrooms and answered questions mm -hmm. about what was going on. And, you know, the questions are like, where'd you poop? What'd you eat? Like kid questions. And like it was this whole community was behind me and it felt so empowering. And so I climbed the mountain. I summit, which is woohoo. I come home. I share the story with the kids. And I was gone for three weeks. My kids yeah. were loved on and seen by so many people in my community. Like your mom's the one climbing Everest. Good job. How are you? I saw where she is. And all this magical connection and community. I know. But I would have never experienced if I didn't dare ask or share like, hey, this is where I need help. And I wouldn't have had, my kids wouldn't have had an experience of, hey, my mom's gone, but she's doing something pretty cool. And there's a lot of people that care about me, not just my mom. And it ended up being this gift that I can't even put a price tag on. And I share that story because I think a lot of us have an excuse somewhere in our life that's keeping us stuck. And it's normally something like, oh my mm -hmm. gosh, my kids are going to be okay. Because if you take care of your kids, you're like a good mom and society praises that. And so it's easy to hide behind those excuses because it's warranted by society. So when you start pushing against those and you start finding other definitions or other ways to solve, you do not know what kind of gifts that come out of it. But I'm telling you, it's pretty magical when you lean in. Mm, I love that so much. I actually was just having a conversation with a client this week and, you know, who has young, younger children and, you know, where that can stop people and how it can keep yes. people. And, and what you're what you're saying is ask for the support, ask for the help. Yeah. And yeah. Um, that's where it can really open up for somebody. Yeah. And Beautiful. you just, and then you, you, never had, you had climbing coaches too. You had climbing coaches you had. And so was Everest your first, your, your first summit then? I mean like the big, big Everest. Summit? Ever, okay. So Everest was my fourth big mountain and I was fourth using mountain, Everest okay. to train for K2 because even though K2 yeah. is the second is highest like peak. One of the hardest, isn't it? Yeah. So K2 is the yeah. hard, one of the hardest in the world. And so my thought was, okay, right. I'm going to learn how I do on Everest and figure it out. And then when I get to K2, it won't be as hard because I just did Everest. Mm -hmm. And you kind of have like a little bit of mm -hmm. confidence in you once you climb Everest. You're like, I climb Mount Everest. Right. Um, so I think that was important. Like anytime you're doing something, if you can do something similar to it or harder than when you actually get into the game of what you're trying to accomplish, you have some experience. So it's mm -hmm. less new coming at mm -hmm. you at once. Mm -hmm. Um, but there mm -hmm. was like so many ways that help played into this whole pursuit that, you know, it's one asking for help. Then it's two, like saying, Hey, here's what I need in this moment. And then like being okay with asking for it and being okay, being weak or not as strong as you want to be and just being truthful, right? Like when I worked with my training right. coach and, you know, sometimes you, I'm like, Hey, I didn't finish the whole workout today. And that coach would give me permission. Okay, well, this is how we'll fix it or don't worry about it or whatever. And it's just nice to have somebody to bounce those ideas off of because it keeps you grounded in what you're doing. And you know, you have somebody else kind of looking mm -hmm. out for you and keeping the big picture in mind. Yeah. Oh, so cool. So, so cool. How did you manage your mindset? Right. I mean, because mm -hmm. mindset, you know, think about most of our listeners here are going to be entrepreneurs and mindset shows up for us every single day, you know, Every making day. sure our mind is, is, is clear and clean. And, um, and we're going to have days where it's not. And, um, so I, I'm guessing you have some really good wisdom around mindset. Yeah. Um, so I have a few tips that I can share with people listening today. One of them is like, have a grounding technique that works for you and w all the time. Mm -hmm. So for me, I got into What's this. Yeah. So I got into this horrific car crash. 
And when the, the, somebody came to my rescue and they peeled back the windshield and they looked at me and they go, are you okay? And based on his facial expression, I was not okay. So I'm like, oh God, I don't know. Like I just, you know, like you're on this whole thing. And I closed my eyes and I wiggled my fingers and toes. And I'm like, I can feel my fingers and toes. I can feel my fingers and toes. I'm okay. Anything else that's going on is a story that's outside of me. Only I can tell you if I'm okay. Society's going to tell you all the reasons why you're not. But it's up to you mm -hmm. to fight back and be like, no, actually I am. And so anytime I was on the mountain or anytime like before I go up on a stage for a speech or whatever, if I start getting those nerves going, I'll close my eyes and I'll just wiggle my fingers and toes. And I'm like, I can feel my fingers and toes. I'm okay, girl. Like we're good. And calm down and step back into what's needed in that circumstance. So that's one thing. So I think really having a way to pull out of whatever's going on, connect back to yourself so that you can, again, deal with what's going on. And then I also think mm -hmm. you like get through the hard times in the good times. Okay. So if I'm in a hard time, that's not a time to come up with a strategy that's going to work. Okay. That's a time to test the strategies that I've come up with before. So I knew mm -hmm. when I was climbing Everest, it was going to get hard. I just didn't know when it was going to get hard because I hadn't been there. So I had a bunch of right. tools that I used that I was like, okay, at some point I'll need these. So for example, I kept a picture of my kids in my jacket. So anytime I got like crazy, I could pull that photo out. I could connect to them. I'm like, they're watching. If they're watching, how do I want them mm -hmm. to respond to this? And I would borrow courage from mm -hmm. them to handle the situation. I wrote myself a letter. So when I was in a good space, I'm like, here's why you're doing this. Here's who you are. This is like what you're doing. You've got this. So I was a cheerleader for myself. So I could pull that letter out, read it and like reconnect to my why and who I am. I also had friends write me letters. So my parents, my kids, some girlfriends, they wrote me letters so that when I got in a hard spot, I was being reminded of who I was by people who cared about me. You do not need to be climbing a mountain to have that thing happen. Tell your friends, hey, I'm taking on this business adventure, or we're going to launch this new product, or I know it's going to get hard at some point. Can you write me a letter to remind me who I am to you so that when it hard, is hard, I can read that and like reconnect to who I want to show up as? Mm. Always available. Mm. And then silly, yeah. but still good. I had a playlist, a music that I like to listen to that gets me in a good mood. Um, yeah. And then yeah. I had an essential oil of oranges. Okay. So when you're in mountains, there's no smell. Mm. Like I, there's, you know, there's no life, there's yeah. no birds, there's no bugs, there's no plants, there's no smell. And I remember growing up and going to Florida and squeezing orange juice with my grandma. And that was my favorite part of Florida is we got fresh squeezed mm -hmm. orange juice. And so I would bring out that essential oil and I would like put it on something so I could smell it. And it would bring me back to that memory mm -hmm. and just allow myself to oh, connect wow. to things that I was grateful for. And then I would like have more energy to do what was little, maybe less grateful for at the moment. Oh, that's awesome. That's real. Those are all such good tips and very doable tips, right? It's like just yeah. things that we can plan for and we can bring or put things around us. So when we start to drop into those spaces um, and I, I think that's an important part of that is plan it beforehand so that when you get to that space, you're not searching, you've got the tools right there. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Cool. Cool, cool. So how did this journey lead to the work you do today? So talk a little bit about the work you do today and, you know, just what, what your calling is right now. Yeah. You know, so here's what happened. I built a successful financial service company. And when I had children, I hired myself out of a job so that I could be a stay at home mom. That was a huge transition mm -hmm. that I didn't really give myself credit for because I had all this external validation on a regular basis in the business world. And you come home to be a mom mm -hmm. and you're like being pooped on and puked on. And like, no one knows if you're doing it right because you don't find out for decades. And I don't even know if you still find out. And so it was like really hard to lean into that internal compass and trust myself. Um, mm -hmm. Then I set out on this world record pursue and I learned how to trust my intuition and understand like, when is it safe? Like I turned around on some climbs because it just didn't feel right. And I allowed oh, yeah. myself you that space to. and yeah, right? Like you have to. 
And so now that I've been kind of accumulated these experiences, I find that when someone's at a pivot point in their life, right? Kids launched to college, they just got a divorce, they lost their job or they left their job, or I, one of those moments where they're, they're at a plateau and they don't quite know what their next step is, those are my people. Mm -hmm. Like I love working with those people. I will take them on adventure just to pull them out of the noise of the world. So sometimes we'll do hikes in Park City. Mm -hmm. I've taken a group to Kilimanjaro in Africa. And we just work together on getting intentional, building up that internal compass and strength so that when they do step into this mm -hmm. next thing, it's not just success, it's significance. And I think that's what we're all looking for. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I love it. I so love that. And it makes a lot, it makes a lot of sense because you've been down this, this pathway. And so you can help people go, um, you know, into this, this depth of, of discovery and rediscovery into what's being called there. So it makes yeah. a lot of sense. So at Ignite, you're going to be talking about, we can do hard. Yes. And, um, this is, you know, as entrepreneurs, um, you know, I know from my own journey, from, you know, my client's journeys, it's never just a straight, easy line. It's, you know, it's entrepreneurship is messy. Oh, and, yeah. um, you know, it's, we have all these journeys that we go on to get to the places that we're going. And we, we, often cannot, you know, see the, you know, the pathway that we're going to go from here to there. I mean, that's just, it's, it's just never, ever a straight line. Um, so when you think about what you'll be speaking about at Ignite and, you know, we're not going to give all the secrets away of what you're going to be speaking about Ignite. You got to come to Ignite to, to meet Jen and hear her wonderful talk. But I, I loved this, this title. And so it just give us a little glimpse into what you'll, you'll cover at, at Ignite. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm, I, I'm still developing some of the stories because I want to switch things up, but I want to talk about embracing imperfect starts and how that shows up and how yeah. we overcome that and what that looks like. I'm going to talk a little bit about perspective. I was in a horrific snowstorm. I lost a friend to an avalanche. I mean, like crazy experiences that when I bring you to the depths of that, you're going to be able to reflect on your own life and be like, oh, okay, here's maybe a different lens I can look at things with, or here's a different way I can find courage to continue. And then also I'm going to share a story about climbing in Antarctica and becoming the first American female to stand on top of this um, summit. But the journey that got me there and the lessons that I learned and how important it is for whatever mountain we're climbing, be it in our backyard with our neighborhood or whatever, that's so significant. So I know like if you come to this event, you're going to leave and you're going to be like, yes, we can do hard things. Let's go girls. We got it. Yeah. 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 No, it's going to be awesome. I cannot wait. So um, where can people follow you, learn more about your work? Um, where, what's the best place to do that? Yeah. So definitely check out jendrummond.com. We'll have all my social media handles there so you can pick a platform of choice. Reach out, say hello, let me know you're here. Um, you can also join the email list, which gives you ideas of things I'm working on or working through and ways that you can get into the community of doing hard things. Excellent. I love that. And then the final question I always close with is what are three pearls of wisdom you'd like to leave with the listeners today? Okay. So pearl number one is being kind to myself makes me stronger. Okay. Mm, that's a hard so one for good. a lot of us. Um, yeah. Pearl number two is only you can do you. So it's so important for you to have the tools and the skills to learn how to trust you because no one else has your combination of experiences or life or desires. And so the more you lean into you, the better we all benefit to be able to experience who you truly are. And then um, I'm going to give a tip for the last one. This is something I do every day. It's called a trigger meditation. I don't care what your trigger is. Mine is the doorknob. Every single time I touch a doorknob, I take three deep breaths. And in those three deep breaths, I just check in and say, am I living my authentic self or am I on autopilot? And if you check in like multiple times during the day, you're going to start becoming aware of when you're not living intentionally and you're living on autopilot. And the more we become aware, the more we heal and the more we get to be who we're designed to be. So there's your three. Yeah. 
So good. I love it. I love it. Well, I look forward to having you in Colorado in October. And, um, you know, it's going to be just amazing to have you with us and it's going to be an amazing conference. So come join us. If you want any details on Ignite, it's at camigilnerd.com forward slash Ignite. Um, it is, it's a way that you're going to raise up your voice, your, your vision, your visibility, and really grow your business with more time prosperity and more wealth prosperity. So um, Jen's going to be so much inspiration. All of our speakers are going to have bring an amazing inspiration. And keep tuning into um, our episodes this month because we're going to be featuring all of our speakers this next month. So it's a good way to start to, to get to know some of the women who are going to be in the room. So um, Jen, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. And um, I can't wait to, to give you a big hug face to face. Yay. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody.